occasionally hold a winter test, but we use sleds with shafts on them. Uh, some people will use a travoy or travois, like the Indians that drag behind. There's lots of different, uh, four wheel four wheel wagon, which is hard to back, but it's nice for parades or giving kids rides. So it, it kind of depends what you want to do with draft work as to what type of equipment you want to use. Like I said, if it's more for parading or giving kids rides, you might want a four wheel wagon, it's much more stable. Dra uh, for a draft test, you'd really want to go for maneuverability and that would be a two wheel car. So you just need to know, most of us have more than one type of equipment, so we have different you know, things we can do with it. Um, the other thing you need is a harness. Now occasionally you can even find a harness in a pet store, but they're not really going to be a proper fitted harness. Um, anyone that wants their dog measured for a harness today, we can measure them. And I'll, I'll show you how you measure for your harness. Nemo, can you get up a minute? Come here. Stop. You feel for the shoulder blades on top. You take a flexible, like a sewing measuring tape, a flexible measuring tape. Stand up. You start it between the shoulder, the two shoulder blades. You put it right between the shoulder blades. Then you bring it down to find the point of the breastbone. You stand. Stand. They really do need to be standing. <laughs> <laughs> so you put it between the shoulder blades, go to the breastbone, and then for the longer haired dogs, pull it real tight so you're not measuring fur. Find that breastbone and then pull it tight and mark it with your finger. And if you get a, a Oh, I'm going, what are the measurements? That's better. <laughs> if you get what I got a 14 or somewhere close to, I got 14, that's half the measurement of around his neck, so I would go with a 28 harness. Of course, if your dog's growing, you know, you want to get something maybe a little bit bigger, but um, that's what you do. You, from the shoulder blades to the breastbone, pull it nice and tight, and then double the measurement. Uh, there is a company called Dog Works. They have a website, dogworks.com. If any of you have used it before, wondered where it went, well, someone kind of started to fade out of the business and then ended up selling it, and it is now back in operation again. Any kind of draft equipment, any kind of working equipment, including videos, books, dogworks.com is the best source, and you can get the harnesses, the carts, everything you would need to get from them. Uh, so you need a properly fitting harness, you need whatever type of apparatus would be appropriate for the work you want to do. Come on up again. Now that you've got the harness with the correct measurement around the neck, I'm going to show you how the equipment should be adjusted and give you a reason why. It's hard to tell on him with all the black fur, but this piece that goes around the neck is actually, sit down, sit down. Nemo, sit, stay. I've got one that isn't on a dog, it might be easier. This is a little bit different type of harness. The type of harness that we prefer to use is called a side wash harness. And the side wash harness, as you can see on the dog, leaves the whole shoulder assembly free and open. There's nothing coming across. The type of harness you might find in a pet store is called a parade harness. Very easy to put on, it goes over the head, and it has like a wide band that comes across here and straight back. It's fine for like a light load, and that's why they call it parade, just kind of for show or something, not pulling any heavy weight. But it goes right across their shoulders. And you know the dog, when they have to pull, they need to have that use of their shoulders. So that's why we prefer the side wash harness. This, the neck piece that goes all around their neck, the part that you measured for, this is what they actually lean into when they're working, this piece here. That do this sits above the shoulder blades, this Y part right here, this joint part here, will sit right on the breastbone. The dog actually lean. this is in the front of the shoulder area here when they're pulling. They actually lean into this and push into it, and that's where the, most of the pull comes from. They do have the traces connected to the back of the part, but when they're pulling, this is what, how they do it. They pull into this. That's why it's so important that this fit correctly. If it's too loose, it's going to be back onto their shoulders and it's going to affect their pulling with their shoulders. And if it's too tight, it's going to come up and get them under the neck. So that's why it's very important to get this fitted properly. This one is, uh, this is a side wash that is on him. The nice thing about this harness is you can 
leave the traces off and they can just hang around in it and not have anything loose hanging on the dog. This is a freight side wash harness that as you can see is always a tangled mess. <laughs> but it comes back to the single attachment point in the bar. Um, some like to use this if they're pulling a little heavier weight, but I've used this in tests as well as that. The, the biggest difference is, you know, when you'd have the dog unhitched from the cart and hanging around, this is kind of hanging in the back and bumping them. He doesn't seem to mind it, but something to consider. And it's a lot harder to put on because it always does get tangled up. Uh, the other piece that you have is, I better show you on him. Emo, come on. The other piece that's right here behind his front legs is called the brake band. And the reason it's called that is on your shafts, you'll, there's always a little something this far back on the shaft. And we call that the brake. And what that's for is to keep the cart from coming forward and hitting the dog. If they're going downhill or fast and they stop fast, that will hit the loops on this brake band. See, they have the loops on either side, and that's it holds the shafts in place, the shafts go through it, but then if they go downhill, the brake will also hit here and keep the cart from coming up and hitting the dog from behind. So this is a, this is a brake band. It has the loops for the shafts, the loops also are where the brakes will hit. And this you want to have adjusted under all the other straps. This is this upper strap, and there's the strap that comes from between his legs. When you put this on, this needs to be inside all those other straps. So much hair on the <laughs> get the hair up. And the reason is, if it's on top of these straps, you can see when the dog does start to pull, when this is pulled back, when the dog has some weight behind it, you see this tighten up, you see this tighten up. This is where the pull is coming from. They're connected to that strap around their neck that the dog's leaning into and pulling into. So if you were to interfere with these straps that the point of pull is going through, it could change how the dog pulls, make it less comfortable for the dog, less efficient for the dog. If this strap were on top of this and you pull back, you'd have a broken line rather than a nice straight line. So that's why it needs to be underneath all the parts that the dog is pulling from. This harness also has a belly band, and basically all the belly band is for is just to hold these pieces in place so they're not loose and flopping around when the dog isn't hooked up to the harness. Some people actually work their dog without this band, just an extra piece of equipment, but it does hold these in place for you, and that can be adjusted fairly loose. You don't want it so loose that the dog could get a hind leg up through it, but that can be fairly loose because it's just really holding this in place here. So that's the proper fit. To put this harness on, it goes over their head, and then their front legs go through these straps on either side. You actually pick their legs up and pull them through the straps. And then the, that way, this goes right under the chest, and then it breaks in two pieces and comes out this way underneath to here.